All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, we've still got some people who are logging in, uh, but we'll, we'll uh, just to make sure that we get done in the interest of time here, we're going to get started. So the, uh, the webinar today is to uh, review the impact of Apple Maps. There's, uh, there's a lot of choice words that you could have for, um, for the, the result that Apple has had with launching this new mapping system. We, we elected to go with impact here today. So the, uh, before we get into all the detail, I just wanted to give a quick overview of Marquette Group um, and, and who we are, what, we, uh, what we're trying to do here uh, from Central Illinois. We're a directional marketing agency, uh, meaning that we focus on uh, location-based advertising solutions. Um, we connect uh, qualified local customers to national brands, really specializing in, you know, those national brands that have multiple locations, uh, what, what you would call either national to local or multi-unit brands, uh, making sure that we have marketing solutions and advertising mechanisms in place to help them not only with their brand, but also make sure that those local customers can find them wherever they're searching. Uh, we've been doing this for almost 50 years now. Uh, we have great partnerships that we leverage to make sure that we're providing, uh, a, you know, in, incredible, enormous value to our to our clients, uh, and as well as all the other uh, all the other items that we'd expect, uh, performance metrics and reporting, and uh, and providing phenomenal customer service. When we look at uh, overall the, the services that Marquette Group provides, uh, that we have four different groups that we, that we combine our solutions into. Uh, the first being local, uh, where we're making sure that wherever potential customers or existing customers are looking for you uh, online, that we make sure that, that your information is accurate and it's ranking very well. We have social services to help brands manage the challenges of having hundreds or thousands of locations across multiple social networks and engaging with the communities on each one. Our mobile solutions are designed to, to really be top of mind when consumers are in their car or they're, they're in that moment of need and they're searching uh, for a new business partner on their phone. And then our search solutions, which is uh, uh, a big enormous part of what we do is, is making sure that regardless of where those customers are searching for, whether it's a search engine or uh, a, a local search portal or any of those other mechanisms, that our clients are taking advantage of those performance-based and subscription opportunities. So what we're going to discuss today is uh, just sort of an overview of where we're at with, uh, with Apple Maps to date. Uh, how we got here, uh, the, the impact that it has, uh, and then we're going to look at uh, all the different data sources. It's going to get into a little bit of the technical side of Apple Maps, uh, but, but not too deep, I assure you. And then lastly, we're going to look at the, the common problems for multi-unit businesses, which again is, is sort of our specialty and, and what our client base is made of here. Uh, and, and that last section is going to take uh, probably the most time, it, there's a lot of different curiosities that we've encountered. So um, looking at the, the where we are at and, and how we got here with Apple Maps, it's, uh, you know, Apple Maps is part of iOS 6. It's the, the newest version of the operating system that runs on iPhones and iPads. Uh, it's not just on the new iPhone 5 but rather any device that is updating to iOS 6. So this, this is a software package, um, and, and what they've done is they've actually gotten rid of, of Google, who is their primary service provider for mapping. Now, when we say Apple Maps, it's, there's the app itself of, of Apple Maps, um, which when you're, when you're, if you're on an iPhone or an iPad and you click on the little Maps icon, that opens the Maps application. But Apple Maps also is, is underlying in all of the, the what's called uh, the SDKs now for iOS. So that means that any time that in, an app, whether it's the Weather Channel or, or any other app, tries to pull a map through the iPhone software, it's going to be displaying the Apple Maps data instead of the Google data, which it had before. So you're going to see Apple Maps not just in that one specific app, but you're also going to see it 
in in a variety of places as the, you know the easiest example would be on the weather channel so this launched uh, about two three weeks ago uh, with the launch of the iPhone 5 uh, it's been public for developers uh, for about four months now and so we've had an opportunity to test it and, and to uh, and to get engaged with it for a while and uh, you know even in the testing months ago uh, all the, the developer community assumed that it, it wouldn't be launching in its current state so you know when, when when you're working with beta software and you're searching for things and you're trying to use it as your main device and you can't do basic tasks like get directions or or find local businesses everybody assumed for the past four months that this was just a test version of the software and that when they rolled out publicly uh... in the public rollout was a couple weeks ago that it would be fixed and improved well it turns out that nothing really changed and they've rolled out with uh, what a lot of people are considering a half-baked piece of software uh... as apple maps and what that has resulted in is um, a, a little bit of damage control that Apple's had to do. Um, the first, the first thing, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of negative press, a lot of criticism out there for Apple um, based off of this launch. Uh, Tim Cook wrote an apology letter that can be found right on Apple's homepage, uh, which is, is very, very visible. And then if you look on the the right here of the the slide, they they actually have now in their App Store they have a, a collection of apps that can serve as replacements for the Apple Maps application. Um, so it, this is, uh, they, they recognize how serious this is because it really does limit the functionality of the phone. You know, getting directions and looking for businesses is one of the core uses that people have of their smartphones. And, and we've taken a step back uh, so much so that if you, if you read the letter from Tim Cook, they actually mention these competitors, including Google, which was who they were trying to get away from to start with. Uh, so, you know, th this, is, this is something, as we mentioned, that is specific to, to iPhone and iPads, with that, uh, that iOS 6 operating system. And what that, uh, what that amounts to is a significant number of users. Uh, so while, while Apple has fewer users out there in terms of m actual mobile subscribers, uh, it's still a pretty big chunk. There's... Uh, according to Comscore, there's 35 million current Apple mobile subscribers. Now, those are people who are using it as a phone. Uh, that does not include people who have iPads that are just using them at home that don't have data connections. Uh, that's out of a universe of 116 million smartphone users. The, the 116 million smartphone users is out of an even bigger universe then of all mobile phone users, of which there are about 235 million uh, mobile phone users that are thir age 13 and over. So we've got about, uh, you know, over two-thirds of the people in the United States have mobile phones. Uh, m about half of them, or more than half of them, have smartphones. And out of that, uh, about a third of them are using Apple. So this, the problems that they're having here, and, and as it relates to business owners or, or marketers for businesses, uh, you know, we've got 35 million people here in the United States that are could be having trouble finding our information now, and and we know that mobile is such a, a great lead generation source that really it, it lends to the the severity of this problem. Uh, we've got uh, the last statistic there on the right, and, and it's tough to know exactly how many iOS devices and how many people have iPads and iPhones combined in the United States. Uh, the best number that we have is it's about 435 million iOS devices have been sold worldwide. Uh, so obviously not all those are in the United States. There's a huge penetration in the United States. Um, but we, there's a very, very significant number of users uh, that are on these, these iPads and iPhones. So the reason why they made the switch, and, and this is on the left we're looking at an example of Google data. On the right we're looking at an example of Apple data. Just to real quickly touch on, on why they made this change, you know, uh, the one could argue that the Apple version of the maps on the right is a little more appealing, a little bit easier on the eyes, uh, certainly less confusing than the one on the left. Um, apparently, at the best that anybody can estimate right now is that what uh, the the beef between Google and Apple, for lack of a better word, 
the conflict probably more appropriate was uh, Apple wanted features like turn by turn directions through voice. Um, they wanted uh, en enhancements made to the app. And Google didn't want to put those things into the app without more of a call out that this was sourced by Google. So they didn't want to be providing enhanced and cutting edge features to Apple without Apple you know, making it clear to their users that Google is the one who's providing this service and this value. Uh, and, and as you know, Google and Apple have, uh, have a history of, of challenge between the two companies, uh, really starting when Apple launched the Android uh, operating system for mobile devices. And so it, it really just came to a point where Apple had to say, we, we're not willing to say that Google is playing a role in our operating system, and they refuse to add these features that we need, so we're going to have to come up with our own mapping application. So that's how we got here today. Uh, what, what they didn't realize is sort of all of, the, all of the other items that come with having a mapping application. So as we get into the next section about data sources and submission, uh, we're going to talk about you know, the, the, way that, uh, the way that listings distribution works uh, to some degree. So what Apple did is they established partnerships with uh, a lot of different companies. This is maybe 10% of a long page that, uh, that lists all the different sources that they have for this information. Uh, you can see some there are for map data, some of them are for business listing data, some of them are for international maps, when we look at the sum of all of these different items, uh, there's dozens of different data sources that Apple is using to create this this what they this, this ecosystem of Apple Maps. Uh, it's it's as you can see, it's a combination of a lot of data. What it seems as though they weren't expecting was just how just how important it is to not just businesses but to consumers to have this data be. Uh, functional and and be accurate. Um, you know the the it's taken Google about six years or so to get to the point that they are with Google Places and with Google Maps, and it's still dramatically flawed. Uh, and and so it's not very surprising to know that the Apple Maps has these changes. But if we look at the list on the right here, we've got a couple of them that are bolded. We've got TomTom, Tom, um, Axiom, Factual, Locallys, and Yelp. To the best of anyone's knowledge right now, those are the key players in terms of business listings data. You can see it, you know, you can see locallys and factual on the left there saying that business listings data is coming from there. The interesting part, though, is that each of these are providing different pieces of information about business listings. Uh, so Yelp, while they're providing some information, mostly what they're providing is, is reviews and uh, other enhanced content like photos really adding on to those to the listings that might be originating from TomTom Tom and Axiom. So it's it's a it's a big blend. These these five that we have are the are the best sources of information. And what we have found in Marquette Group is the clients of ours that we had already a relationship established and we'd been uh, submitting listings data on behalf of our clients to these five companies. Those are the ones that are, are definitely experiencing the best results. However, if you haven't already been submitting data uh, to these sources, um, then, then you're unfortunately reduced to trying to work directly with five different distribution sources or uh, distribution channels above and beyond all of the other work that you're trying to do to try to get your listings accurate and ranking well on Google. So it's uh, it's... Right now, it's unfortunately an unmanageable amount of work to try to work directly with each of these. But, but each of those five channels have systems like this, like we see here from TomTom, Tom, of how you can get them the correct data. So while, uh, while this is an informative <laughs> webinar, uh, certainly don't want to spend too much time talking about the, the, <coughs> products and, the products and services that we have at Marquette Group. However, uh, you know, this is a service that we offer. We have about uh, 70 different partners that we distribute information to on behalf of our clients. Um, we do this, uh, you know, variations of what you see up on the screen here, for about 50,000 business locations. Uh, so there's, there are some efficiencies that you can be gained by working with a partner. 
Unfortunately, though, if you don't have uh, somebody to help you out with, with distributing these listings, then you do have to work direct with most of these. Uh, and, and just a quick point, as we go back to this slide about the, all the different data sources, uh, when you talk directly to these companies, uh, speaking of TomTom, Tom, Axiom, Factual, Locallys, and Yelp, uh, they they oftentimes don't even have a great grasp of what's happening with their data. Um, they all are under the impression that they're playing a very significant role in the data that that Apple is using for their listings information on Apple Maps. Um, but but the reality is they they don't really know. So the, the best uh, the best solutions right now that we've found are not just working with one of the companies, even though they say that they may partner with one of the other companies. So trying to say that as politically neutral as I can, um, but uh, as an example, some of the CEOs of, of these companies, TomTom Tom and Waze, Waze is a GPS navigation, a social GPS navigation app, which is great if you haven't checked it out. But the CEOs of these companies have said, you know, all we did was provide Apple this data. We in we no way, shape, or form suggested that they rely solely on this information and nothing else. Uh, so it's really kind of this bizarre mix of where things stand right now. So as we uh, as we move back here towards the last section and start to go into detail as to what what all of these issues, how they you know show up in real life scenarios, uh, we've had like I said, we've had about four months to do testing and to come in come across different scenarios, and there are three big ones, three big common situations that we're going to try to make sure we cover here today. The first and, and the most obvious one is that the locations are not being found. Um, so you can see here two different screenshots. The, the one on the left is for Marquette Group in St. Louis. This was actually as I was driving to St. Louis yesterday um, and trying to find our location there. Uh, and uh, so a search for Marquette Group St. Louis and a search for Marquette Group, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, nothing that I searched for could get this location to come up. The uh, we we are we do have a paid relationship with Yelp for our business locations in the United States and Canada. Uh, so it, it's just a, a a classic example of everything appears to be set up, but for some reason in Apple Maps they just they have no idea that we exist. We look at the second example on the right. Uh, we have a, a little bit different scenario. Uh, this is for our location in Peoria that I was searching for. And I, I use the search term Marquette Group Agency, Peoria, Illinois. And uh, that having the word agency in there ended up giving me the screenshot that you see there of no results being found. So um, just going back to the St. Louis thing, uh, the example, uh, yet again, I, I had the opportunity because it's about two and a half hour drive or so. So I had the opportunity to uh, investigate this as I, was, as I was frantically trying to figure out what our address was so that I could uh, get to our meeting on time. Um, I, I finally got a result to come up on the left there. And you can see it's Marquette Group, St. Louis, Missouri was my query. And the result that they gave me was Marquette Avenue which is nowhere near where our office is. We unfortunately don't have a street in St. Louis named after us yet. So that was frustrating. And so I was, I was contacting our office in St. Louis, and I said, I, I'm going to need your address because I can't find this location in my maps to generate GPS directions. So uh, just a, a, another minor example, um, but we have on the right there, me trying to get directions at 222 South Central, which is our address in St. Louis I've come to find. And uh, as I'm driving down Highway 40 there, you can see it says that I'm supposed to be taking exit 32C. Well, it turns out that the actual exit that I had to take was 31B. Luckily, I'd been there before and I recognized it. But uh, you can imagine for if this was a customer trying to get to a restaurant or a pizzeria or a retail store and they'd never been there before, they would be looking for 32C and, and probably give up on this. So it's, it, they're minor examples, but what we're looking at with Apple Maps is that you know, there's, there's all of these minor issues that are coming up, and the sum of them combined and the fact that they happen so frequently is resulting in this, this user outcry and, and uh, business outcry too because small businesses who rely on people being able to find them through local search 
uh, that if, if they simply are no longer found on the results page, their business can be taking a major hit from this because, again, it's 35 million people that can no longer find their business uh, using their smartphone. So uh, certainly recognize the fact that the, the example on the right of having exit 31B versus 32C is, is a minor issue, and it's something that uh, you'd hope that people can figure out. The unfortunate reality is that every time one of these things happen, it could be a lost customer for your business. So as we go on to the next section, so the first problem is location simply not being found. Uh, the second major problem for multi-unit businesses is going to be incorrect data. So this was an example that I had as I was uh, trying to drive up to um, Chicago a couple weeks ago. Uh, this was using the beta version of the software. And I got an email confirmation from my hotel saying it was, it was a Hyatt Regency in McCormick Place. I was going there for a conference from BIA Kelsey. And uh, I clicked on the address in the confirmation email from the hotel, which was, you know, it was directly from them. I clicked on that address. And Apple Maps suggested that where I was trying to go was not in Chicago, but was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And no matter how many different variations of this, as you can see the query there, it says 2233 Martin Luther Drive, Chicago. And then I tried 2233 Martin Luther Drive, Chicago, Illinois. Everything that I tried would put me back in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, much to my chagrin, because I had absolutely no idea how to get there. And uh, I'm, I'm very reliant on figuring it out as I go to, uh, to get to these places on time. I, I then tried to search for uh, search for Hyde Regency McCormick Place, and I got our, our friendly result of no, no results found. So uh, apparently the Hyde Regency McCormick Place was not able to be found. Uh, somehow I got, got it to work out, but it's an example of the, the incorrect data that, uh, that even when things are set up the way that they should, it's just simply wrong in their system. Uh, the, the best example of this is uh, from the, uh, the amazing iOS 6 Maps Tumblr. And it's, it's, it's really simple, uh, but the real-world applications are, are very, very unfortunate. So we've got the actual Washington Monument, which you can see there, uh, very, very clear. And then the pin for the Washington Monument is, let's say, uh, uh, you know, two-tenths of a mile south of where it is. Now, in the case of the Washington Monument, if you get that close, you're probably going to be able to see where it is. Um, however, if this is a case for a small business, or if it's a case for a, a branch of a larger business, like a large retail organization or a pharmacy, uh, even if it's across the street or a half a block down, it can be confusing enough for somebody who's trying to find you for the first time that they abandon it and they try to find a different solution to what they're looking for. So there's a lot of examples of just simply bad data where the geocode is wrong, which is what we have an example of here on the right-hand side, or there's, there's bad addresses, which is an example on the left, um, where, where just the real-world application of what people are trying to look for and, and the way that it exists in reality is different from how it's represented in, in Apple Maps. The reason why this is important to mention to, to business owners and marketers is that you know, th this can be something that's frustrating for users. And if, if they don't understand the situation, which many of them, you know, not being professional marketers, haven't taken the time to, to read up on all the problems with Apple Maps, they could see this as a reflection of the, the business itself. Um, and so uh, we find that, you know, the knowledge is, is very valuable to share in a case like this with general managers or, or whoever is at that local level so that they can uh, they can educate their consumers or at least talk them off the ledge when they're, they're having a situation where a customer is angry or it's calling them saying, I can't find directions, um, so that they know how to answer those questions. They know how to, to spin that in a positive light, and, and you know, they're, not, uh, they're not getting frustrated at the customer who's trying to find them who's also frustrated. The, uh, the next example or the next uh, of the three major issues that, that we've noticed for multi-unit business. The first one being no locations found. The second one being incorrect data. And the third one is, is uh, in my opinion, even more challenging than the first two. And that's poor search matching. Uh, this is for a, an auto service repair shop. 
uh, that uh, that we've worked with and, and are currently working with. You can see here that uh, when you do a search with the dash for and you know this is a, a unique example certainly because there's a dash in the name do a search with the dash and it comes up with no problems in Apple Maps it finds it that is the actual location of where that uh, that that franchise is located however uh, if you do a different search and you put in uh, you eliminate the dash it doesn't find the location at all uh, and then in fact it pulls up some competitors for some reason so if we if we then decide to uh, do a different search, and instead of searching for the brand name, we search for a generic search term, and we search for oil change, which is one of their key services that they're offering. The only location that comes up within that map area in Peoria is the One Mobile Lube Express. Now, I don't have a screenshot here, but uh, if you do a search for auto service, it comes up with probably 30 different locations in this area on the map. And we can, uh, if we have time, if there's questions at the end, we can, we can do some, uh, some demos on the webinar here of, of sample searches. Um, but it, that, I call that uh, poor search matching um, or fuzzy matching, something that Google was really, really good at because of their, their heritage as a search company. They know that when somebody is searching and they type in a certain word, that it doesn't always mean exactly that that's what they're looking for. So if, if you were on the Google system of maps and you typed in the second example here of car X without the dash, they would, they would interpret that and they would know what you're looking for. Even though they don't have an exact match for car X without the dash, they would say, well, you know, this guy most likely, 99 times out of 100, they're looking for this, this other location that we have that has a dash in it. Um, and, and that search matching where they're able to interpret what you're trying to find as opposed to just giving you literal and explicit results based on your query is how we end up in situations like this. Um, going back to the example that we had before of uh, Marquette Group Agency Peoria, Illinois, um, and I'll go back here so that everybody can follow along. Um, that example on the right here of Marquette Group Agency Peoria, Illinois, that that is an example as well of poor search matching. So if you type in Marquette Group, Peoria, Illinois, it finds our location with no problem. So the, al the Apple algorithm does not yet have the sophistication to be able to make those kinds of interpretations or even really to suggest back to you and say, you know, did you mean this instead of that? It's, it's very, very elementary. Uh, and it, the, the unfortunate result of that is having situations like we have here with this location, uh, where a search for oil change pulls up dramatically different results than auto service or car service would even pull up. Uh, the, the, the next example, and this is yet another real world experience from my testing over the past couple of months, um, I was in Denver and I had about uh, almost an entire day of nothing to do while I was waiting for my next meeting. And I was out by the airport, which is the purple spot um, south of Brighton there, and I was looking for a, a golf driving range just to see if there was one nearby to kill some time. Um, and, you know, a search for golf range, apparently, according to Apple Maps, there's only one, one spot in all of Denver that has a, a golf range. Now, uh, other searches where I was searching with the word range in there uh, would also yield results of gun ranges and shooting ranges. Um, it, the, the search for driving range itself works pretty well, but if you're, if you're distracted and you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you're not willing to do four or five different searches uh, to find what you're looking for, uh, users get very frustrated with this kind of information because there's probably about 50 driving ranges within 20 miles of where I was, but uh, you know, I wasn't able to find any of them unless I was willing to try three or four different searches to get that kind of information. So that, that poor search matching is something yet again that uh, for business owners and, and uh, multi-unit business marketers is, is really important because as you go out there and as you do testing, you're going to see examples of this. Uh, and, and you're probably going to find a lot of examples of it. And as we look at, uh, at, at what's next and what do we do about this situation that we're in, the, the future is unfortunately bleak at the moment. 
Um, there's a couple of different options that we have here. So as, as you find these instances where your location is not being found or you, you come across these problems for certain search terms, uh, there is the option to report a problem. If you, if you click on the, the bottom right corner of the screen, it peels back the page as you see here in this image. And there's a, a very hidden link for report a problem. And, and when you click on that, it brings you to start a process of, uh, of letting them know that something's wrong with their map data. Unfortunately, as this is so new, it's only been public for a couple of weeks, uh, there's no real data on turn time, on how quickly they can resolve things, and there's also no information on what they're doing with this data. Uh, so there, there's not really a, an indication that we've got a team of 30 people that are processing this information and manually correcting our database. Um, right now, the best anybody knows, this this goes to Apple and is, is waiting in an inbox somewhere and, and waiting to be handled. So. I trust that they're doing a lot more with it than that, but the unfortunate reality is right now we just simply don't know. So looking at, uh, at more next steps, th what I've got here is an example, uh, yet again, of this is doing a search for Apple Store, and you can see there above the No Results Found box, you can see the actual Apple Store on the map. It's a landmark on the map, but yet the Apple Maps search for Apple Store does not show a result. And just sort of if you if you were to sum up all the different issues that we've talked about today, that's sort of the classic example of not being able to even find their own store when it's right there on the map. But the best thing to do is to is to really start testing. Even though we don't necessarily have great channels to fix things, the more we have an understanding of what the problems are, the better prepared we are to take action once the, the right channels are in place. Um, there, you're going you're gonna to see things that are very frustrating and, and we're happy here to have those kinds of conversations and, and to try to help identify perhaps why we're getting bad results. Um, and, but at the same time, there's not always a good answer. There's not always a resolution for something that may be having a significant negative business effect. The next thing that I recommend and, and uh, is, is hopefully very clear from the presentation is making sure that you've submitted all of your accurate information to all these different databases. Whether you do that uh, yourself or whether you do that uh, by using somebody like us to help you with it, uh, I am biased, but I would recommend the uh, the latter of those two options. Um, that is that is where they're pulling their data from. We've got 35 million users on smartphones alone who are looking at this information. So it's really critical that we get that uh, that we get that accurate and and distributed to those to those different five sources that we talked about earlier. Um, and, and hopefully what's next, not something that we can do necessarily, but hopefully what we can see in the future is similar to what Google Plus Local has in place, where you can claim these listings. You can say, I'm an authorized representative of this brand, and there, these 500 listings, I can verify they're mine, and I want to control the data for these. Uh, there is no mechanism like that in place right now for Apple Maps, but hopefully that's something that's on their roadmap. Um, there's, there's been no indication that it is something on their roadmap, but really with the importance and, the, and just the volume of users who are looking at this information, we, we really hope that we can see some item similar to this where we can have that direct control uh, and, and some element of direct control over this information. So uh, that uh, brings us to the conclusion of the prepared slides. We've got a little bit of, uh, of extra time here, and I see that there are some, some questions that have come through. Um, I'm going to uh, do my best to answer those. We also have the ability to do a, uh, a live demo uh, if there's a search that you want to see. Um, we, can, we can go into that and, and show you what, what's happening in Apple Maps in case you don't have a Apple device handy. Um, but I've got two questions here. Um, does Marquette submit to localese? Uh, yes, we do have a relationship with localese. Um, we, we have relationships with, uh, with all of the different channels uh, that we have there. And, and Alex, it looks like you asked the question if, if we can provide you with all the different data sources that we can submit to. Uh, yeah, we'd be happy to. Um, I'll have uh, We've got a couple of people who will be following up on, on the webinar, and, and uh, my email address is there on the screen. So um, I'd be happy to provide that information. 
And then uh, Leslie asked a question. Um, it says, uh, how does what was presented today relate to GPS navigation systems and phones? Um, do the same data sources and resolutions apply? Um, I, I believe I know what, uh, what, you're, what you're trying to find out here, Leslie. Um, the GPS navigation system itself, uh, and, and by that I mean the, the pieces of hardware inside the phone that uh, connect with the GPS satellites to know where that phone is located, um, that functionality hasn't really changed at all. The, uh, the GPS software that takes that location and provides you the driving directions or provides you, um, you know, information about how far you are from a certain location, that, that has changed, but only for people who are in the Apple Maps ecosystem. Um, so there are other software providers. Um, an example would be MapQuest uh, or Telenav. They have applications that you can download from the App Store. Um, and, and that going back to the, uh, that I'll, I'll try to get back here real quick. So, so whether it's, uh, whether it's Telenav or MapQuest, um, they have the ability to, to fix that navigation. So they're using a different data set. Forgive me as I scroll through the uh, presentation. You can see this, this link right here on the Apple Map Store, the Find Maps for your iPhone. So you, you can essentially uh, replace the application with MapQuest or Telenav, and that would be using a different and, and likely more refined data system. Um, you uh, you asked here then, Leslie, and clarified that you're looking for um, car GPS navigation systems. Unless there's some way relying on the data that is coming from the iPhone, and I know that some there is some level of integration of things like Siri into cars, like uh, BMW uh, has plans to integrate with, with Apple where you can just drop your iPhone your iPad or iPhone and have that be the data source. If, if the car is using the data source of Apple, then they're going to have the same problems. Uh, but the vast, vast, vast majority of cars that have GPS systems built in are using a different source of information, uh, usually somebody like TomTom, Tom, uh, where it's not quite as up-to-date necessarily as what can be found in, uh, in the Apple ecosystem. Um, the next question here from Bobby is, would it be possible to create a data layer and a third-party app when the maps are accessed? Yes, uh, in terms of uh, development of, of a new app or a custom app, it's absolutely possible to create data layers. Um, when you're looking at using the Maps SDK, that the software development kit that they have uh, available through Apple, you can just use their map itself and the roads and the names of the roads and things like that and put information on top of that. Uh, so if you're a multi-unit business and you're building an application to help users find your locations, you can say that I've got a thousand locations and here's the information that I want it to display and here's the latitude and longitude where I want the pin to be dropped. And you can, you can basically work around the data source and, and the database that Apple has in place and use your own database and say drop a pin here and I want this pin to be called location one, two, three. Uh, so that that's definitely still possible, um, and, uh, and and there's a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of people who do who use that method in their in using the maps in their applications. Um, Lindley, uh, thanks for contributing. Yes, I I believe that uh, BMW is doing that with their navigation services, where you just dock the iPhone in the car and it it links up. And there are more car manufacturers that are planning on doing that where. You either put in your iPhone or your iPad, and, and that becomes sort of the hub for your car. Um, if that is the case, then the, the, you know, it's highly likely that they're using this Apple Maps database to generate directions, and then it would be subject to all the problems that we have that we just discussed here today. So that exhausts the questions that we have right now. Um, I'm going to open up the... the uh, iPhone simulator that uh, that we have here, and we can do a couple quick searches that I mentioned about that I didn't have uh, didn't have the the ability to drop the screenshots in. Um, so if anybody has any searches that they want me to perform, they can just send over a quick note here. 
if not, that uh, that's all the prepared content that we have for today. I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, my contact information is down here in case I'll, I'll put it back up in case people didn't have the ability to, to write it down. Um, I'm happy to answer any calls, and I know that there's a lot of questions about this, and it's something that uh, will probably, you know, it's got the attention or will have the attention soon of, you know, of the C-suite and the executive teams of, of these large brands. So happy to answer any questions or, uh, or field any calls, uh, as, and we'll share any information that we get going forward on future webinars or also on our blog at uh, marquettegroup.com.